Hello, everyone. This is Leonard de Guzman with Emily Robinson here on the Modern Divorce Podcast. We're here. This is going to be the last uh, podcast episode for the year. Uh, so, Emily, um, do you have any like New Year's resolutions uh, you have going or what's going on? <laughs> the usual figure out work life balance and, you know, manage to do that and stay sane, which is always hard every year, but that's pretty much my new year's resolution every year. (laughs) What about you? Uh, I I think I'm going to continue what I did last year. So I gave up, I mean, I video games. uh, So I got the Xbox uh, in the garage. So um, it just takes up so much time, which is great when you're, when you're younger, uh, it's fine. And then I have some friends too, that are like, uh, my wife is threatening to divorce me if I don't stop playing video games because so, it takes, I, I don't know, it just ruins marriages. So, so like, you know, streamlining here. Uh, so that's kind of one of those uh, things. Uh, so, yeah, so I am, um, I don't know, it, it's like when I see the Xbox in the garage, I kind of like get these weird feelings now towards like <laughs> electronics. You just uh, have to yeah. ha- have a kid and they have to get old enough that you play with them and then your wife can't get mad at you because you're playing with the kids. And also too, gaming's like, uh, it, it makes money now. So um, I don't know if that's an excuse. And then I know I heard, I read something where kids are like getting scholarships, college scholarships to play on uh, esports. Like I think UC Irvine, if that's still going on, I think you're testing it, but uh pretty big in Asia too I know um it's like it's a business so not here in the yeah. US still. <laughs> so um yeah yeah that's true my son would love that if that's a thing he'll jump on that I can't get him off his games so let's let's get in the show maybe uh some some of this topic some of these topics come up um let's get into news here um so this part of the show, we go over what's going on, what's trending on Google for divorces, uh, relationships, um, mostly um, people, uh, you know, going through things like uh, I see here. Uh, so let's get into it. Celebrity, celebrity news. So this is um, this has been in the news for the last, uh, I guess, couple of days, a day, the news cycle. So this is. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Maria Shriver officially divorced after 10 years. Um, so uh, according to TMZ, it may be the most drawn out divorce in Hollywood history, but 10 and a half years. Um, Maria Shriver and Arnold Schwarzenegger are single again. It went down Tuesday morning in LA Superior Court. TMZ has learned the divorce has had, the divorce had been mediated by a private judge and that judge signed off on the divorce earlier this month, but it needed to be entered into the court system by sitting judge, which happened this morning. That's why the divorce took so long. It's a combination of lack of motivation, a very complicated property settlement agreement. As we reported, both Maria and Arnold moved on years ago, but they both have been in relationships, but stayed cordial with each other and often had family gatherings with their four kids. The rupture in the marriage occurred more than a decade ago when news leaked out that Arnold had fathered a child with the housekeepers, with the family's housekeeper. Um, so look, it, so it looks like they're dividing. So it says here something estimated at four hundred million dollars, and there was no prenup. So, in your opinion, wow. why does this? It's ten and a half years, so they're just like just let just hold off on it. We'll get to when I get to. I thought they were already divorced. I didn't realize it was still going on. You know, it may just be, well, maybe they were fighting, but it may be that neither one was just in a rush. They were living their own separate lives. They both had enough funds to, you know, to to keep going and didn't need anything from the other at the time. And this, it, it may have not been a priority. You know, if you don't have custody issues and you don't have, um, you know, immediate needing financial help from the other person, you may not need to speed it along. You don't want to get remarried right away. Um, you know, it, you, it just sometimes 
is just like there in the background and you just go on living your life. Plus, I know one of their daughters was got married and had a baby and who knows, maybe that, you know, they just, it was never a good time to deal with it. So, um, cause then one of their daughters married Chris Pratt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so like maybe they just didn't want to deal with it with all that happy stuff going on. I don't know. Poor Chris Pratt. He's getting a bad rap in the media lately. Yeah. I liked him when he was Andy in Parks and Rec. And then now he just, he's a Marvel superhero. And people really hate him. Uh, yeah. So I like him in Jurassic Park. I really. I like him. Well, I, I read what he said, you know, I don't think he meant it like that. I think people have really taken it. Like, I don't know, you can spin anything anybody says, however you want. But like, I think people like to pick a, a good guy and a villain in every divorce, you know, and um, it's, that's usually not the case. It's usually like both people did some stuff that, you know, it's not usually like, a hundred percent one person did something bad and the other is a saint so who knows you never know the backstory yeah he's laughing all the way to the bank he's gonna be like um super mario right? in this new in the new reboot I, did they do re no i don't oh. think they did a um, super mario movie but yeah he's he's laughing really i didn't know that and there's another jurassic park coming out jurassic world I think Ooh. he's in. Yeah, so I'm he's so doing excited just fine. for that. <laughs> he's doing yeah. just fine. Um, speaking of people are doing just fine, uh, TMZ has another one, another uh, report here. Dr. Dre pays a hundred million to Nicole in divorce settlement. So Dr. Dre has settled his divorce case by striking a property settlement agreement with his ex-wife, and for Dre's part, they're we're told uh, he's delighted Nicole Young is only getting a fraction of his estate. Uh, Dre and Nicole just filed their property settlement agreement, which Dre agreed to pay Young $100 million, $50 million now and $50 million a year from now. Dre's estimated net worth is $820 million. As for why um, Nicole didn't get half, there's a prenup, which she contested in exchange. Dre gets keep seven of the properties they own, including a Malibu home, two homes in Calabasas, four properties in LA, in the LA area, including the $100 million Brentwood estate. In addition, uh, Dre gets full rights to his master recordings, trademarks and interests in various partnerships and trusts. He also keeps all of their Apple stock, which includes the proceeds from the uh, sale of Beats by Dre. Um, there's more assets to that it says here, but my God, like, so, okay. Uh, just in principle alone, like, so there's a prenup, no prenup, prenup that was contested. So it, they, so just go to show you can negotiate these things. Well, yeah, I mean, look, everything's relative. Like when you have that kind of money, you know, not getting half, still maybe getting a ton and enough for you to feel comfortable. But yeah, everything's negotiable because litigation is very expensive and time consuming and emotionally draining. So even if you think your position in litigation is 100% going to win and you know there's nothing to negotiate, you still can benefit from negotiating because it may cost you more to litigate the matter even if you win than it would to just make a settlement. And, and, and I think okay. I would say I think our system's designed that way somewhat to push people to settle. Yeah, the question is, what do you do with all that money? Buy an island. That's what I do. I'd buy an island. I'd start my own government. <laughs> your, your own and, currency. You're printing money at this point. <laughs> yep. Yep. And and just run it how how I want to. I want it to be run. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only play these uh, scenarios in video games. <laughs> Me too. All right, let's see. Um, this one's interesting. From BuzzFeed, people are sharing the moment they knew it was time to get divorced and it's a journey. Um, I drew a line, he crossed it, uh, lied about it, and then lied about something. 
let's go over these. These are BuzzFeed is, you know, it's entertaining, but you know, there's some truth sometimes to it. So here we go. Um, while uh, every break of is there is, and people find that one moment can really bring uh, things into perspective. So they asked the uh, BuzzFeed community. So one of the instances is uh, when I saw the text messages between him and his 19 year old coworker when I was six months pregnant, she, well, he left uh, me a week before our second daughter was born. It was a blessing in disguise, I divorced him. I moved on and met someone who treated me way better than uh, he ever did. I got uh, married and we added another baby to our family. My new hubby calls us uh, his pre-made family. So cute. Um, they have a meme here with uh, uh, Kristen Dunst uh, waving goodbye. So this, another one is a uh, first uh, major sign was when he admitted to, to not searching for a job the whole uh, first six months of unemployment, uh, second and last straw when uh, was when I was repainting our new condo. He was playing computer games while I was over and I, and I asked him politely to move his desk so I could paint. He moved on. Um, he moved it an inch. She asked again and, and uh, the same thing happened. I could smell the ammonia on his breath and I uh, knew that it was. Uh, he was a lazy and, and alcoholic fool. The laziness and no ambition got me the most. Number three, um, we were at my older brother's wedding I saw the way my siblings looked at their significant others and the way they looked at my siblings and, and knew it was over we just didn't look at each other the same way anymore okay um number four it wasn't uh when I got a message on Facebook from this other woman or even all those uh, moments when he hit me it was when I sliced my thumb open and he refused to come home during this lunch break because he was down the street at his buddy's house okay let's do one more um number five i knew wow. it was over when uh he told me while trying to have uh ass with me uh after i worked uh, a 12-hour shift and he stayed home during doing nothing that um if i lost weight <laughs> okay this okay, let's go to uh, one more um one more good one well a normal one to end it uh Six, uh, I knew it was over when I found out he had been sleeping with 30 people on and off. Okay, let's go to seven. <laughs> All right, My last, last one. Last, last one. Okay, he insisted that uh, that a freshly cooked meal, uh, cooked dinner be on the table for him uh, and our three kids no later than 6 p.m. every night, despite, number one, I didn't get off work until 4.30. Number two, I was the only one who could pick up the kids after work since he purposely cut the seatbelt out of his car so he couldn't pick them up all right how crazy is this is do you get some of these calls do you get any any of it or, or um how or just it's just crazy right now <laughs> I mean I get I get a lot of situations like that where um somebody feels like they are the one you know doing everything in the relationship and the other person is doing nothing and you know maybe true um but there's always two perspectives to everything. So, you know, you have to take what, what you hear and, and, you know, realize that the other person may not see it that way, but yes, I mean, it's a very frequent, frequent problem that one person does 90% of the work in the relationship and the other person, you know, doesn't do much at all. And I do think that leads to a lot of divorces. Um, you know, there were some other obvious things in there that would cause a divorce, such as the affairs. But, um, you know, and unfortunately, a lot of these things, hindsight's twenty twenty, and you don't know about them when you do first get married and you don't have the kids yet. So you don't know how they're going to be as a parent or, you know, how, how they'll behave with the kids. So unfortunately, sometimes there's just nothing you can do to prevent it at the beginning. It's just things you don't see until later. All right, now let's move on to the show uh, where we ask Emily anything about divorce and she gives us tips and advice and people are happier after Emily gives <laughs> such good um, advice. Um, so um, let's get into it. Uh, let's see, this one is, let's see, it's a one with custody and kids. Uh, divorce feels like I have failed completely and I'm destroying my child's life. Uh, things have been difficult between my partner and I of 10 years. 
there is no point in continuing as a couple. We simply end up hurting each other too much. We have a four-year-old who's very attached to both of us, and we always share parenting responsibilities equally. So there's uh, no absentee parent dynamic. I never imagined I'd be in this place having to divorce. Separation feels like one of the ultimate failures uh, to me for idealistic reasons and religious influence. I'm so angry at myself for letting it come to this. All the divorce families I know are very messed up. The children had this uh, pushed on them and suffered so much. Uh, am I destroying my child's life forever, making them uh, unable to cope and lead a good life themselves? Um, oh, that's then, tough. Well Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Thought it was over. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, this is here. Um, so there's, okay, so they retain the child custody 50-50 and have no issues around child support alimony. Um, and they're friends uh, amicably, and but still feel this, but she still feels this way. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, 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 I cut you off. Um, I think that's a normal way to feel. And I think a lot of people feel that way, but people have to realize that it's not a failure. Like, you know, the only way you can fail your child in this context is if you can't act like a grown up during the divorce and put your child in the middle and put them in a situation where they have to be really uncomfortable and feel pulled between their parents and, um, you know, feel like they have to pick a side that really harms children. But if you can act like a grown up and be responsible and come up with a reasonable co-parenting relationship, um, all the research shows that your child will be fine. And it's it can even it can be more damaging for a child to be part of an unhappy relationship that you stayed in for the child, but the child can sense everybody's unhappy. So um it's not a failure. It's only can be made a failure if you don't handle it properly and and make your child stuck in the middle of the situation. All right. Um, here's another one uh, with uh, kids. How we told our kids is getting started one. So last night we told our sons who are 12 and 18 that we've been separated amicably. This is the hardest conversation I've had in my whole life. Uh, and the one I was dreading the most, they took it as expected uh, with anger, tears, disbelief, and some lashing out from the eldest. But today they're carrying on as normal. And while I'm sure they're hurting, uh, they will be okay. For anyone contemplating telling your kids this, this was the script we used. Um, so there they say, uh, you know, for the, fra for the past a few years, mom and I haven't been making each other happy. Neither, neither of us, um, is there anything wrong? We've just grown apart. We have tried working on our relationship and have been even through a um, couple therapy, but it hasn't worked. That uh, we've always, um, we always have have been and hopeful. Uh, hopefully, um, always we'll be good friends, but we can't be married to each other anymore or live together. So we made a difficult decision to separate. Um, yeah. So how? Is, so this seems like it, it was a, a good conversation, uh, but I can't imagine it. It's like, it's just like taking, um, you know, especially, you know, 18 and uh, 12 are relatively younger, um, I guess, adolescents. Is that, is that how you say it? So it still must be tough. Yeah, it's always tough. It's, it's hard to break up a family, but um, having a united front and telling the children together and not blaming anyone and being able to have both parents say this is a mutual decision. I think that's really helpful for children as opposed to the parents telling them separately and one saying this is all the other's fault. And, and that's what I mean about acting immature and like children. And, you know, that's what causes children to have issues and to um, really struggle and be hurt by the divorces. But if you can be a united front, tell them together, make it like it's a joint decision and that you still care about each other and, and you'll still be friends, I think that is the best way to do it. All right, here we go. Um, Christmas story, says your worst Christmas ever. Uh, so this is a getting yeah. started one you know, with the holidays. Um, so um, we've been together for about three years on Christmas Day. She asked for a divorce, telling me she uh, mentally checked out of our relationship. Some time ago, she gave me a list of demands. She wanted me to change with no compromising. I 
complied to all of them. Yesterday, she told me she was pregnant. We were trying to have kids for this entire year and it seemed like this was poor timing. I wanted desperately to be a father, trying to do as much as I could have saved our marriage. Today, she told me that she scheduled, uh, gosh, an abortion. She told me that she hated me, uh, stating that she thought that everything she had done uh, would drive uh, drive me away. Um, still love her. I, I know uh, deep in my heart that there's no saving this marriage, even if she did want to try and fix things. Um, I don't think I could be married to someone that inflicted so much pain to me in a short time. Um, where, where do I go from here? Does anyone have any recommendations for a first step? Wow. Well, that's really, really hard and sad. I mean, if she wants out of the relationship so badly that she did all this stuff purposely to push him away and then is planning to have an abortion for a baby that they were trying for, I don't know if that relationship, if there's any way to salvage anything there. And it seems like he should just move on and find somebody that he can have a life with because she is clearly not someone who's going to consider his his feelings and wishes. You know, just the fact she tried to basically hurt him by pushing him away and getting him to want to leave. I mean that's immature and he just needs to find a better relationship. All right. Uh, our last post of the year uh, here. Um, so this is um, a life after divorce uh, cut off uh, friends. Oh, cut off from friends who took sides a couple of years ago um, out of my divorce. A few formerly very close friends have decided they are unable to be <clears throat> in my presence at all anymore or go to an event uh, if I'm there. This is extremely hurtful as the former partner who endured a traumatic relationship and they have decided to take this person's side over mine, even though there doesn't seem to be um, logic to this choice, even though that I, I'm uh, most certain that I did not wish anyone to lose friendships and my ex and I are in a good place. Has, has anyone gone through this uh, before? Um, is it just time and distance or did the disagreement require fully moving on from them? Um, how do you fix this? That's tough. I mean, friends do tend to take sides and, you know, like, I don't know if, if you can fix it, it's their choice and they're the ones, you know, being probably immature about it and choosing to take a side and there's not much you can do about other people's choices. So hopefully those people come around and realize they can be friends with more than one person. But if not, I'm not sure there's much you can do. It's like trying to change somebody who doesn't want to change. Um, you just have to move on like you do with the relationship because those people aren't mature enough to be friends with both of you. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for this year, um, I guess we're going to leave 2021 um, here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, what do we have to look forward to? I mean, we'll cover it uh, in, in next week's uh, episode, <laughs> next year's. Um, so what's, uh, you know, just to close out this year, like what are the topics, um, I guess that'll, I don't know, this is weird, like that we're going to leave in 2021 or they're like new things uh, in 2022 or they all stay the same and we just kind of figure it out. Well, hopefully we're looking forward to, you know, the courts being more digital, um, continuing to do electronic appearances and e-filing, which made people's lives so much easier. Hopefully we're looking forward to less masks and more you know, control of COVID and, and um, less uh, people getting sick and no more variants popping up. I mean, I think people are very, very tired of this. I am. And I'm, I'm hoping for a year that's, that's less, less about COVID. All right. So we'll just find out. So thanks so much for joining us. We will see you next year. Bye-bye.